Hey everyone, it's Kevin Sharp, and today I am joined by an artist who's no stranger to the Comic Art Live channel, Mike Oming. Welcome back, and thanks for joining me. Hey Kevin, thanks for having me, man. So, I'm excited because you have picked not only an artist that hasn't been brought up before, but a publisher. Why don't you tell us what you chose, what we're going into today? I chose an Alex Toth page um, from uh, Creepy Magazine. I, I think you figured out which issue it was. Number 76. Uh, yep. Number Number 76, this, this story called Ensnared. It's not his most famous story of all of his, like, uh, of his work. It's not his most dynamic page, even. <clears throat> One of the reasons why I chose the page, not only is he my favorite artist uh, kind of all, all around um, and one of my biggest influences, but this page in particular has some of the most important rules about making comics on it, as far as I'm concerned. Well, why don't we start with, when were you a creepy reader as a kid? Uh, <laughs> let me rephrase that. Did you read Creepy Magazine as a kid, or when would you have ever found this? I found this as an Alex Toth creator. As a kid, I wasn't reading Creepy Magazines. I was never really particularly into the horror comics. Um, the horror stories I like are because of, you know, somebody like, you know, Alex Toth or Bernie Wrightson did a few. You know, the, the artist is what would, would draw me towards these things. Um, so early on, when I when I first really became a fan of Alex Toth's work, I just started finding, I, I got one of those lists. It was so fun back in the day before the internet, dudes. You younger readers, I know you're going to kind of think this is stupid, but when you couldn't find everything at the tip of your fingers, you would go to like a Sunday convention, you know, in a basement someplace or like a fire hall, you know, it was all stale aired and stuff. And there was just this kind of depressing, but there was this like glimmer of hope, These this list that you had in your hands, you would find these books. So for me, it was for a long time, it was all this, this Alex Toth chest checklist. And like not all of it, I want it because some of it's from those earlier periods where the, the art didn't quite interest me as, as much as later on. And, and this was one of the, the stories that, that I found the pages are just drowning in black in ways that I hadn't seen before um, in a way that seeped into all of my work now at, at a very early age. Well, not at an early age. Actually, I got into Toth a little bit later. So, so these kind of pages really left an imprint on, on my mind. It was still... It was kind of later as I had started, but early enough in my professional career that it really imprinted on me. Um, and this is one of the pages or typical of the kind of page that that seared itself into my head. The, this one I chose because of the kind of the, the overall rules that that are that are attached to it. Yeah. So why don't we dive into the page and um, talk us through what you see on here? It's it's funny because, yeah, dude, when you look at this page, first of all, you're going, there's hardly any figure work on it. There's hardly any backgrounds you know there's hardly any quote storytelling so what what is mike talking about here what is so important the thing that grabs me about this is the most important thing for me when you're looking at a page far more than your ability to draw or your illustration style or anything is how do you guide the eye on the page that is storytelling the clarity of going from left to right for having your eye be guided onto the page is to me the most important thing well, I've been a fan of Eisner's work before that, but I started to relook at his work in a different way. And especially when he would do these pages that would have like the titles on it. So then the title became part of the page. And sometimes the title would be like embedded into a building. So now you've got the environment, the panel work, and the eyeline are all the same thing. And this is something that, that Toth is doing very, very strongly here um, with just words and uh, just a few figures. So like, there is no doubt that you're going from the top to the bottom, left to right, top to bottom, and it's guiding your eye. It's like turning your eye into a heat-seeking missile. And once you learn to master that, then you can do all this crazy stuff like, like, like Eisner was doing, or what I proudly developed later in my career, um, which is I'll do like sort of mazes on the page, or I'll turn the panels themselves into... Uh, like templates that are guiding the eye across the page through through its design. I did a lot of that in Cave Carson. There's a lot of that in, in Murder, Inc., where I, I feel like I took it to another level. And that always brings me back to this page because there's hardly anything on it, but it's so strong in its composition and its guiding of the eye. It's kind of everything in one spot. Like this is the most valuable lesson that, that, I, could, that I could give somebody about drawing a comic book page this is it this is everything to me there, there are much more dynamic pages like i said but but this is the basics of it if i could hit you with a big picture question when you think about toth and his maybe his influence on you or his appeal to you personally what is the number one kind of toth point of awesomeness for lack of a better word that hits you it's the way that he used black 
Um, and like everybody loves his Zora work, right? Because his Zora work is kind of this most refined all around sort of quote best work. But but for me, it comes later on. And it's in a lot of these weird stories, uh, the backups he did in DC stuff, especially in the, the late 60s and into the 70s, all the way up to the end of his career, really. He just started to develop this thicker, chunkier line with lots of black. And the black became not just part of the composition, it started to frame layers and depth in ways that he wouldn't even need to use perspective, even though he was happy to use perspective. And the way that Alex could do that with these thick, chunky lines um, always impressed me. It's always something I'm, I'm striving for. Um, I don't get as thick and chunky as he does, and there's other artists out there who do that. Uh, Chris Samney, I think about his work all the time when it comes to his inking, and I, I'm in complete awe of it. I stopped trying to do that because I realized I was trying to do something that's not coming naturally and instead grab the other things about Toph works that, that comes naturally to me. So I have to hit every guest with this question because we're on the Comic Art Live channel. Do you own any Toth original art? I do. I own uh, a Hot Wheels page. I own several letters. I was very lucky. I was one of the, the, the people who was like writing letters to him back and forth. And he would write, you know, start at the top of one page, go all the way down to the bottom of the page, all the way to the back of the next page, and just stop when he ran out of space. Um, there'd be like a handful of little sketches on there. He was very kind to me. I got really, really lucky because I know he could he could tear even people that he admired. He could tear them uh, a new one. And those letters mean a lot to me. And uh, the only thing that bums me out is every time I think about this, is shortly before he died, he had had a, he had a heart attack. And a lot of professionals were writing to him, um, you know, at the hospital because somebody gave out like the, the hospital he was at. And at this point, I had written several times and sent him comics and uh, including some of Brian's book, Brian Bendis. It's like Jenks. And he really liked, he loved Jenks and our work on powers. I was like, I'm going to wait till he's out of the hospital because I know how it is. You're in the hospital. You get lots of support. When he gets out, he goes back to his home. And I understand he lived alone. And, and that's when I wanted to write to him. But then he passed. So I never got to write him that last sort of support letter and stuff. So I, I always think about that with his letters. He meant a lot to me. Well, thank you for sharing that and, and for giving us an excuse to look at this. You've got a lot of uh, irons in the fire as far as new projects. Can you please let the viewers know where they can find something in their local comic shop or online or anything that will have your name on it? There's uh, Murder, Inc. with Brian Bendis. We have a, a, our third trade of that is coming out, um, which is they, they go to the Vatican and it's this huge, sprawling, epic adventure. I think it's some Taki's best colors. It's one of our, our best books. Project Blue Book with James Tinian. We have the first trade of that out, which is about the legendary uh, Betty and Barney Hill story. The new series is called 1947, and it investigates the early American lore from uh, the beginnings of Project Blue Book, the very first early sightings by Kenneth Arnold, to some of the hoax stuff, to cover up stuff. Uh, just, just It's more of an investigative journalist view of it. And then lastly, I've been working on the first thing I've written, drawn, colored, and lettered. It's a full mini series coming out from Dark Horse uh, called William of Newberry, which is uh, based on the historical writings of an actual uh, medieval monk named um, William Newberg, who was recording the, the history of England at that point, which was this time period called the Anarchy. And it's true history, but he's also writing, people are reporting about the dead coming back to life. Um, so basically it's, 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 it's an anthropomorphic retelling of these stories with uh, zombies and the dead. And it's a lot of fun. If you like Hellboy and Yusagi Jimbo, my work on my Templar, you'll love that. And that that's coming out uh, May from, from Dark Horse. Plenty for fans to look out for. <laughs> Thank you again for joining us. Super fun talking about this page. Thanks so much. It was really fun. And, and I was honored to be able to give this page uh, uh, a little spotlight.